<laughs> Hello everyone. Welcome to IQHS. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And welcome to the third episode of 1F4 Birds Opening Masterclass. In the first video, we look, took a look at the basic variations and the lines that exist as part of the birds opening. The second video, we covered the reverse stitch positions that arise after the move F4 followed by D5, C5 and Knight to C6. This video is going to be dedicated to my favorite variation which begins with F4 and black decides to copy us with the move F5. A quick plug before the video begins. If you have not watched the previous videos yet, I will link them down below in the description and you can find the links for the videos in the icon above. Check it out and yeah, also my voice is a bit rough today because I'm having a cold. So sorry for that. Let's begin. In this position, we could actually just play knight to s3 and just move on forward. But my favorite variation in all of chess is the one that goes e4. This is called as the Swiss Gambit and this is what I believe is the best Gambit in all of chess. The reason is because I have a 100% win rate in these positions. I've played around 17 to 18 of these games in chess.com and I have a 100% win rate. And recently in the tournament in my university, I beat a 2100 rated player in just 8 moves. So yeah, this is very, very strong for white. Let's see. Let's say if black accepts the gambit, we'll look at the decline variations later on. So, after f takes on e4, we are going to offer it another pawn with the move d3. And after the capture, we are going to play bishop takes d3. Now, the thing is like, this position already is very dangerous. Reason being, we have an extremely active queen, extremely active bishop, this bishop also very active. Our knight can jump in at any moment. We have these extremely open files across the board. And yeah, and at this point, I hope you realize that this gambit is not for the fate of the heart. If you are trying to play a positional game of chess, just simple maneuvering chess, developing your pieces, castling your king, following all the principles, then this might not be for you because this game is all about attack, 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 death. So yeah, let's see. At this point, black basically has only one move and that is knight to f6 because simply if anything else happens let's suppose for example black plays knight to c6 but in fact this is instant death try to pause the video and sorry pause the video and try to find the main in three if you can i'll give a couple of seconds for you so yeah here we can play this absolutely insane move queen to h5 check and after g6, we can sacrifice our queen and this is just simply checkmate, the seventh move of the game. So for that reason, in this position, black basically only has one move and that is to play knight to f6. And here, we are going to play the move g4. The objective is quite simple. We would like to play the move h5, kick this knight out and then again proceed to the initial plan of playing queen to h4 check. The reason being, black's white squares are very weak. The light squares around the king have been weakened by this move f5 and we can exploit it very well. Here, again, he said, my, here in this position, my opponent, a 2100 rated player online, he is feeding 1700 and he played the move h6, simply succumbing to the move bishop h6 and checkmate. And I can guarantee you will get at least a couple of games which end just like this. Let's go back. The best move in the position is to play the move g6. d5 is also quite decent but again the knight will get around and then it's really bad news for black. Here we will play the move h5 and following this move knight to h5 we are going to play the move f5. It's just completely aggressive. Our king is wide open but we don't really care about that. Here, the knight to g7 is again the only move. We are going to play f takes on g6. Black cannot capture us because at this point, we can just play the move bishop to g6 check and it can be made. So if black captures us, it's completely game over for them. So for that reason, d5 is generally the most played move. And here it's going to be simple chess. We're going to play the move queen f3. We are looking forward to just take, first of all, we can just deliberately take this pawn and then 
uh, come to check with uh, here. And once the king moves, we can give a check here that will be made, for example, like, I just say arbitrarily black plays something weird, like knight to c6, for example. We can just take, check, and check is a very, very bad move. The bishop has to block. It's just not a good thing. For example, let's see. Here, we can just play the move. We can just play takes. Black is in really trouble. We can just play the move. Next, we're just coming here with this move, and then it's just going to be game over very soon. So for that reason, it's not really supposed to be played. So, the best move here is unfortunately the move queen to d6. How often will you face this move? Not so much because you're gonna play the move queen to f7 check next. The king has to depart. And then you have a very good game here on just at any point if you get a check, you can just put the knight on e2 and then just relax because you already have the castle on. You can just bring the knight out. Put the bishop out and then castle long if you feel like it, your rooks will stand in the D and E files. Putting in same pressure, these two pawns are in the verge of getting promoted. And yeah, there is not a single opening out there which can rival this. So that's the reason why I love this game. Absolutely. Let's come back. All the dispersion. We also have another option for us, which is the move right to F3. And here the plan is actually quite simple. Operate plays the move into c6 first, anything in general. We are going to go for the move knight to g5. Again, we are not waiting around for castling and all that. You could choose to castle in this position, it's absolutely fine. But the best move is unquestionably this move because you are simply threatening to win the spawn. Reason being, if let's say black plays some random move like a6, at this point you can just take this and black cannot recapture you because it's again made in one. It says GG is for black. So for that reason, black cannot really take you. So you can exploit that weakness and just go for this little bit idea. And after that game, the G6 is the only choice. Here you can play the move H4, E6, H5. Just keep marching forward. Again, if black takes, we can even sacrifice because recapturing would be a bad news. Takes and then just get in. The king has to come out and run away. It's gonna be death of black very soon. So that sums up the variations with this entire fiasco. So now we take a look at the declined variations. Let's say here after the e4, black chooses not to take us but rather play something like the move e6. Here again it's very simple for us. We are gonna push. Taking the spawn is not the best thing because black will just recapture and be symmetry. They have no real threats. So I believe the best move here is to just play e5. D6 from black is usually what you will see. We are going to play knight to f3, defending the pawn. Here again, that's a small trap for white. If you choose to play the move d4, it's not a bad move, but it's, it's a good move actually. However, after a capture, you should not take from the f pawn. Because if you do this, black comes with a check and it's going to be bad news for it. You have to move it in the e2 and it's just a pain. It's just not something that you would like to do because it's just why. So yeah, in this position you're gonna play knight to f3 and after the capture just take that. This pawn is a thorn. It's completely devastating controlling all these squares. Black cannot develop the knight here and the sword you'll see after something in knight to c6. Now we need to play the move e4 and this bishop. Let me ask a question. Where is this bishop heading? It certainly can't go here. Neither can it go to the square of c5. And it can't go to the square of b4 because it's gonna push and just kick it out of the place. So, also, if this bishop is not moving, where is this knight going? It has to come this way or go this way and yeah, it's gonna be bad for black no matter what. Here, let's say bishop d7. They will remove h4. The object of h4 is simply restrict black. We would like, we would like to prevent black from getting his development and anticipating the opening of this file. For example, here, knight to h6, we're going to chop the knight off with bishop to h6. And after g takes, now we have a new target. We're going to go queen to d2, attacking this pawn with our queen. How is black guarding? Excuse me. Here, this is the reason why we played this move preemptively. If you see, let's say in this patient, we play something like c3, for example. This whole idea of queen to d2 won't really make sense if you see what I'm trying to say. At this point, if you play this, black just plays bishop to g5. And 
excuse me, are you really attacking them? Because this is not really good. Because after Queen takes, Black takes exchange everything, and then they have an equal game. So for that reason, see, you are thinking so much more ahead. You are anticipating that opening of the G file, and for that you are playing the move H4 right now, and this whole variation with Queen to D2. The best move here is unbelievably this move Bishop to F8, and after Knight to C3, we just have simple development. There are two main targets. This backward spawn is very weak. And then this pawn is also very weak. We can put the bishop out. Castle long. You can bring up this knight if you wanted to. Uh, or bring it this way and go here. To exploit this square. And sure, this is going to be a very good game for you. So that sums up the variation with e6. Also, one more thing you have to look at. Is after the move f takes on e4 and we play the move t3. Black, a lot of black players here would not prefer taking the pawn because they know it's very dangerous. So one thing that we face quite a bit is this move e3, simply trying to reject our sacrifice and be like, I don't know what this move does. Then it's just blocking your bishop. So here we just gotta play the move g3. We don't take back right away. Only after black plays something like d5, threatening to push forward. Now we do take. And after simple development in more like, like this, this is just simple equality. Let's say it develops here. We can just play knight to d2. Bring the knight out. Cast on the king side. Expert on the queen side if you feel like doing so. Uh, and not regaining the spawn. Like maybe put the queen down c2 and then play for b4, a4, a5. And with that, you gotta have a good game. So. That basically sums up all the variations in this gambit. If you feel like I missed anything, feel free to let me know in the comment sections below. Also, I started uploading shorts quite regularly. I would like to get an opinion on that. So if you have any suggestions or ideas, let me know in the comment section below. Also, we are very close to 400 subscribers. Thank you so much for everyone who's been watching my videos for the past three months. I'm forever grateful for you guys. Also, you can find all the moves we just discussed in the description below. And if you've stuck so far, here's a small gift. Here is a game played by a legend. This guy is called as Bird. His name is Bird, Henry Bird. Henry Edward Bird. He is the pioneer of the Bird's opening. And here's a game played by Henry Edward Bird. The game begins with f4, f5, e4. And after the black takes us, d3. Guess where it's going? This is a Swiss gambit. And here, Edward Bird played this knight to f3 idea. Till this point, uh, the whole theory was the move g4. Bird actually was the first person to produce this novelty at highest levels. And here we had this game with ultra aggressive ideas. And then Black played this very weird move, bishop to h6. And then just Bird kept going. Black can't really take because we would just simply sacrifice the rook. And then after knight takes, it's not a good thing for black so we had bishop takes and then the knight came here takes queen to e7 was the only saving move because anything else will be dead and simple rook takes and this pawn let me ask you a question who the hell is stopping that pawn from promoting yeah like who is stopping the pawn from promoting the answer is nobody here we had queen to b4 check off his pression black white played the move king to f1 and queen to h4 was played by his opponent. And here is simple. The move king to e this check. And shielding the pawn with the move queen to h5. And nobody is stopping this pawn anymore. So for that reason, his opponent reside in this position. And it's a 15 move win for Henry Edward Burr. So yeah. Till the next video. Stay tuned. Bye.